Sick of those skinny celebrities and supermodels who look like they can eat anything and never gain a pound? I have a couple friends like that. Sorry, folks. It may be in their jeans. And I don't mean blue jeans. I mean genetic genes. Scientists say they've discovered a skinny gene that controls fat formation. Dr. Elizabeth Whelan is president of the American Council on Science and Health. Dr. Whelan, great to see you today. Thank you very much. Well, you know, they always said, don't hate me because I can eat these donuts, Twinkies, Oreos, on and on down the line and not gain a pound. What can you tell us about the skinny gene? Well, the skinny gene sounds great, you know, that we could uh, manipulate a gene so we could eat more and not get fat, but the evidence we're talking about here is based on fruit flies and mice. <laughs> so I wouldn't jump to any great conclusions. I fe feel at this point it's very intriguing that we might be able to uh, manipulate genes in the future to kind of turn them on and off and, and help us control our weight. But right now, we're stuck with the basic mathematics that 3,500 calories equals one pound, and you got to cut back on what you eat and exercise more if you want to lose weight. Yeah. I know that you don't want to jump to conclusions about the skinny gene, but already it seems that there are researchers across America who are going to jump on this and see how that might apply to helping people in their battle with obesity. Certainly, America's trying to lose weight. Absolutely. But on the skinny side, let's just say there is a human skinny gene. Is there a downside to having a skinny gene? Uh, I don't think necessarily. Uh, you know, you can balance your uh, caloric intake and your exercise so you can maintain an ideal weight. But I think what's intriguing about the so-called skinny gene is that technology can be useful to us in fighting um, our obesity crisis. And I think we ought to put more resources into understanding how we might, for example, develop pharmaceuticals to help us deal with uh, obesity, or and also apply technology to uh, food to reduce the calories in food. Um, I think too often often in talking about obesity, we, we seem very eager to pass laws to you know, tax certain foods or to ban advertising or do punitive things of that nature when I think technology may indeed be the answer. So I'm really happy, even though this is based on fruit flies and uh, rodents, uh, I'm glad to have people talking. Do you think in the meantime that there's a warning here that uh, just because someone may have a, a skinny gene or a fat gene, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, you can, if you've got the skinny gene, to, to go ahead and load up on all the fat-filled, high-calorie foods? Of course not. I mean, the key is, is not only to avoid obesity, but the key is to have a balanced, varied, moderate diet, which can uh, protect us from many different chronic diseases, uh, in addition to uh, reducing the risk of obesity. You know, when we talk about genes and um, environment, when I say environment, I mean, you know, your diet and your, your exercise protocol, they sometimes get very intertwined and they're hard to separate. Uh, I think we do know that genetics do play a role in uh, leaving us uh, uh, subject to sure, uh, and obesity. But and again, it's hard to separate out what your, your family history is from what your common uh, environment in terms of what you're eating and yeah. uh, your, your sedentary habits. Elizabeth, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Some burglars in Texas got creative. They used